today's show, we're going to tour southwestern Ireland, starting in Galway and moving down the coast to Cork. We'll save the rest of the Emerald Isle for a later Let's Visit show. Let's visit the city of Galway. Some Irishmen consider Galway to be the best of Irish cities. It is small, clean, safe, and great for exploring and shopping. There are superb, tiny, brightly painted boutiques, great restaurants, and fantastic pubs. Because of its university and its predominantly young and well-educated population, Galway has attracted many multinational innovative companies, and so the city hums with a young and vibrant energy. The grassed area known as Kennedy Park in honor of John F. Kennedy sits in the middle of Air Square. These soccer players seem to show the typical Irish attitude towards repressive laws, don't they? This city of 47,000 lies at the head of Galway Bay and was the first city in Ireland to prohibit those glitzy plastic and neon signs. All shop signs in this city must be hand painted and wooden. Down at the dock area, we find the Spanish Arch, so named because of the lucrative trading done with Spain in the 16th and 17th centuries. and commercial cutting cargo to Darden Island. But they're not in use at the moment. They're only used for pleasure. So we are get them all, getting them all cultivated up and painted so the people that's coming along can take plenty of photographs of them and send them all over the world. Moving south from Galway, I came to the Cliffs of Moher, a six-mile stretch of remarkable palisades which rise up to almost 700 feet above the pounding surf below. This scenery is by far one of Ireland's most awesome natural wonders. The intermittent layers of limestone and other materials, which are slowly being eroded by wind, rain and the sea, make these cliffs most beautiful. Thousands of seabirds search for food here, but very few are brave enough to make these cliffs their home. And it seems strange to look down on birds flying rather than up at them. The sea stock you see here covered with seabirds and their droppings is called Brennan Moor. It is itself over 200 feet high. On one of the opposite heights is O'Brien's Tower. Built in 1835 by Sir Cornelius O'Brien, a member of parliament, Legend tells us he built the tower to impress his lady friends, but it does mark the highest point of the cliffs. Western Ireland now, at a place called the Boran, just south of Galway Bay. The Boran, translated, means Great Rock. And this is an area covered with limestone, which has many fissures in it which have uh, broken them up. Underneath, there are all sorts of caves, and we're going to visit those shortly. But boy, doesn't this kind of remind you of the face of the moon?
My name is Lorraine and we're here in Bellyvohan at the Alwi Caves. I'd like you to come on a journey with me down through the cave. Now at one stage a river flowed through here and the river channel can still be seen above your heads in the centre. Uh, if you look at this shape you will see it's a half tube and if you could imagine there was another half tube underneath this you'd have something similar to a pipe. Now water started to form this at the top of the mountain, which is up this way. The river then made to go down past where we are now, and it went out where the cave building is. As time went by though, this cave got deeper and wider. Now when the river came through here, the water in it was melting ice from the ice ages. Our last one was 10 to 15,000 years ago. So that would make the cave quite young as caves go. But here, we have plenty of water, and the cave is still warm. Then, look at the formation up here, which is quite unique. We call this the grey hands. If you look at it, it does look like two hands joined together. time to visit the Dingle Peninsula is on a bright, sunny day. But we're going to travel this rugged part of air in the pouring rain. Between 600 and 1100 AD, Irish monks built, lived in, and prayed in these stone beehive huts. They were built with dry stone techniques, meaning no mortar was used, and they remain watertight even to today. I'm inside one of these beehive houses that dates back centuries and centuries. Although outside there's a roaring sea and it's pouring rain, in here, even though there's a big hole in the roof, it's quite warm and dry. I don't think I want to go back outside. Of course, before the Christians came to Ireland, the Druids controlled the people's religion, and many vestiges of their faith remain here, such as this shape-pod-shaped dolmen. <laughs> 